Hi, in this video I'm going to take you through the process of how to get your own artwork into Yumi and start building levels with it. What I've got open up here is the prototype tile set that comes with Yumi. As you can see, all of the tiles are in a single file. In this file, each one is an individual object, and they're all built around the concepts of a 1x1x1 one by one by one cube or grid. Now you don't have to stick to that, you can see at the back here we've got larger uh, track pieces, tile pieces. Um, but what's going to happen when you import these is it's going to pick effectively a corner of this tile and uh, that will be the pivot point for that tile. But there are no real limitations, it just becomes a little bit trickier to know where larger objects are placed on the grid. If you stick to the one by one it's it's really simple, but you don't have to. So the reason we keep all of these tile pieces in one file is often when you're creating a set of modular pieces that need to connect together, you're constantly referencing other pieces. So if we wanted to create a new tile that connected these stairs to, say, this block, and we wanted to put an angle on there, you want to import both of those objects and then build your new piece. And it becomes a little bit frustrating to then have to recenter those on zero by zero zero and just manage all of these different assets and keep them stored separately. So what Yumi does is it takes a file with multiple objects in it, and it takes each individual object, recenters it, and then exports it as an individual prefab. Now there's a couple of considerations. This works perfectly for something like this block over here, which is perfectly square. However, if we were to import this piece, as it stands, um, it would recenter on the um, on the zero axis, so it would look something more like that when it came in. We actually want it backed off into the corner. So what you can do is you can have um, helper objects. So if we find somewhere over here, if I can find it, um, we've got a, an object called B. This object is called B00 wall, and there's an object here called B00 wall bounds, which I've got hidden. If I highlight it, what you can see is it's another cube. It's not shown in the in the map editor, uh, but when it's imported, it effectively tells the importer that this piece associated to the name B00 wall needs special bounds. So what you can do is center that object anywhere within your bounds, and it will be imported um, at the right location recentered to the origin. Um, you can see it particularly with pieces like say this over here, no not that one, that one, which is only a, a couple of end pieces to a, to a tile. If we were to import that normally it would be something like that. Setting bounds around an object means that it centers exactly where you want it to center. Another thing that you can do is you can create custom collision. Um, so let's say we wanted to pick something like this. Uh, it's got more faces than, say, this corner piece. But if we wanted the same kind of collision as this, we didn't actually want the player to be able to follow this corner. We can create a separate collision model and all we have to do is, this, in the same way that we've got underscore bounds, we could call it underscore collision, and it would um, use that mesh as its collision mesh. It wouldn't import it in as part of the tile set, it wouldn't be visible in scene, it would be invisible, but it would use that new mesh for its collision. By default, it uses, if you, if you choose to, it uses the meshes um, uses the mesh as its collision mesh. So let's take a quick look at the importer. If we go over to Window Uponic, we have Tile Importer. We can pop this over here and take a look at it. So let's clear out all of these and let's start again from scratch. because there's a couple of different things that the importer will do. The first thing though you need is a tile object. So 
This is the scene that we just saw in Silo. I've exported it as an OBJ, and you'll find it in the Yumi folder under Models, and it's called Uponic Prototype Tiles. Let's, for now, assume that this is your artwork that you, you want to bring into Yumi. What we do is we just simply drag that into there as a source tile object. Now with Material, there's a couple of ways we can do this. If you want to set up your own Material, in Unity, you can do that, uh, and it will just simply incorporate the texture with it. However, if you want, um, if you want the tile importer to create it's a, a new material, we can simply pick. Let's pick something random. Um, I'm not even sure what these are from, but let's let's say that that is our texture that we want to associate with this new tile set, and that will create a material on import. There's a few other things here. Um, we can set the tiles to static or not, so you can untick that or tick that as you desire. Um, we can set the prefabs to cast shadows um, or not, also to receive shadows or not. Um, this is where we can handle the collision. So we can either bypass collision completely and not have any uh, any collision or physics on any of the tiles if, we, if that's what we want to do when we import it. Um, or you can use a custom collision mesh, which is has this extension attached to it. You could call it anything you want. If you wanted to just call it call. Um, doing this, as I said, by default, if there's no if it doesn't find the name of that tile with this extension of underscore call, it will just use the mesh as the collision mesh. We can tell the importer to use bounds or don't use bounds. If we do, we can again rename this anything we want. Uh, based on the, the artwork that we're bringing in, whatever you want to call your uh, bounds mesh. Um, so let's change it to underscore B. In fact, let's not because it won't import properly because uh, I'm going to re-import this and it's all set to bounds. Uh, if we wanted to append a name to all of the tiles, let's say you've got an experimental set of tiles and you just want to make sure that they're differentiated in the editor. We can add test to any all of the names of the tiles that are going to be imported. That's almost it. We just need to set the tile destination. So let's let's create a new folder of prefabs. And we'll put it in there. And because the importer takes that single source mesh and generates multiple meshes from it. We need to uh, define a folder for the meshes as well. So let's just create a art folder and we'll just pop those in there. So you can see our, our output folders are uh, shown down there to make sure everything's okay and that should be good to go. If we click import tile set, um, Yumi refreshes the file just to make sure it's the latest one and then it goes through every single piece in the tile set and starts generating a prefab for them. So what that's now done is taken all of those individual objects in that single file and created 50 prefabs based on the objects in that file. So if we go into prefabs you'll see there are all of our new uh, tiles and they've got this prefix of test. You can take a look and you'll see they've also taken on the texture that we gave them. So now if we open up the main map editor, dock that, these tiles are already there waiting for us. They're called prefabs because that's a folder that we put them in. Now, if for some reason those tile pieces had not shown up, which can be the case if the map editor is already open, because it doesn't know of a change, uh, it doesn't know that it needs to re sort of rescan the directories and look for any uh, new track pieces or tile pieces that have been brought in, we can hit reload. And what this does is extensively goes through um, and looks for all of the new tiles in there, all of the existing tiles, and does a full re import on them. Sometimes this is useful because I'm using the Unity preview uh, for, for the palette and often when you open up the map editor 
Um, if the lighting hasn't been calculated, they can look kind of dark, which is a bit a bit strange. But um, if that's if that happens, you can simply hit the reload available tile sets, and that will that will fix that lighting issue. So now we've got our tiles in there. We can start painting just like uh, before. And that is how you get your own artwork into Yumi. Uh, thanks for listening, and I hope you have a great day.